Hey, this is OXDF. Today we're going to look at Game Overlay, a CVE that was really hot last summer, 2023. Um, and it was really hot because it was a basic instant root on many Linux distributions, including like Ubuntu. Uh, the exploit code is so short that it fits in a tweet, and yet it's super complicated and not at all obvious what it's doing. So today we're going to take a look. Uh, we're going to go in and walk, work through each step of this exploit code and uh, understand what it's doing. Why now? Well, the analytical box just retired from hack the box, and this is the intended root step. So what better reason than to dig in now and take a look? Well, we're thinking about that. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so we're going to start here with a shell on the analytics box as the Metalytics user. Um, I will grab a copy. I guess first we can take a look at the uname minus a here to print out. This is the uh, version of Ubuntu that is vulnerable. Um, it's not actually a kernel exploit, but it is in, tied into the OS version. Um, we'll grab a copy of one of the POCs here and paste this in. And you can see basically we run this and we get the output of the ID command from right here. Uh, we'll go again, we're going to go into this in detail, but we can see where our UID is root. So we ran a command as root. That's bad. Uh, or good if we're trying to hack. Um, so let's pull this apart. We're going to start with the unshare command here. So this is the key part right here. And to this, I'm going to do some high level hand waving, but we're going to talk about namespaces. And without going into too much depth, think about how like a Docker container, if you're the root user in a Docker container, you're root in that container or namespace within that space. But then like another, you don't have access to the root files on the file system. And if you're a non-root user, you have even less permissions. So you can set up these namespaces with their own um, hierarchies of different users. And that's what the unshare command is going to do. And so in fact, we'll grab right here, we'll do unshare, remove sh. In fact, I'm going to do bash since I just pulled it easier to work in. And you can see all of a sudden we are root, right? Look, are we root? Like did we just, what we just did was we removed ourselves from the namespace that the box is on. And so if we look at our current file, we're still in, we're still in the um, Metalytics home users. So we can still pack cat user.txt, it's still there. If we try to go to uh, the root, we get permission denied. Uh, if we go here and do an ls minus la, uh, we can see the root directory is here, but everything's got no group and no body. So like, the permissions of the file system are kind of screwed up in this different namespace. And you don't want to just be creating namespaces like this. This is not a way you'd actually create a namespace. You do it um, under a much more controlled way. But here, the point of this exploit is to get us into this into this kind of new namespace where we are root. And once we're here, let's flip the, um, let's go back here. We can go back into the Metalytics home directory. Um, the next line of the exploit is to uh, make their L U W. And we, so we just made four directories. So you can see four directories, we're good. The next line is copy slash u star slash b star slash p star three to l. Um, now, what does that do? Well, we just we just copied, I mean, bash works with these wildcards. So we just copied a bunch of things, a bunch of binaries that start with p and then with three into l. And if we look at l, we'll see, well, there's pdb3, pydoc, py git text, py, but the important one here is we got Python three. Um, why they didn't just do copy Python 3 to L, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to be cute. Maybe they're trying to avoid detection. Maybe it's because they wanted to fit it in a tweet. I'm not sure. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is, again, nothing super surprising here, but we'll do cap uh, set UID plus EIP on L slash Python, oops, type that right, uh, Python 3. And so we've just given Python 3, this copy of the Python 3 binary, the set UID privilege. And that's going to allow it to basically become root if it wants to. So what does that mean? Well, we can do a git cap on that same binary. We can see it's got set UID. Um, if we look at the other directories here, um, so like u doesn't have anything in it. Uh, L, we've seen that. If we do an ls on w, there's nothing there. If we do an ls on m, there's nothing there. So we've got, we've created, we created four directories. We've put a binary there. We've given it some privileges. So here comes the magic. So we're going to do a mount minus t overlay. Uh, and then we'll do overlay again. Might as well, I probably should just go up here and get this from, but not, not in Tmux. Let's see, where are we? We are going to grab this right here. Whole thing. Uh, let's do, let's paste that in. So we are going to mount a type overlay um, with some, in, with the, where we define the mount point is going to be the M directory. And then we're going to define these lower, upper, and working directories. Now again, OverlayFS, the whole point of OverlayFS, and I go into some detail in my blog post for analytics, but the idea is that you can set a kind of base image and then make changes and sort of just track the changes. And that's how containers work. Uh, they save the base image 
And then as you change things inside the base image, you're changing things in an overlay FS where you're making the changes that will apply but without having to, you can start 10 containers and you don't have to create 10 copies of the original. Um, basically the idea is lower dir is what's available inside the container or namespace, upper dir is what's available on the host. Um, and and the, the issue that comes up here is we wanna make sure we can't set permissions like set UI, UID um, capabilities and have those transfer from inside the namespace to out. And that's the vulnerability here. So we've run this mount command. Uh, now, if we look at uh, ls of l, we still have our files there. If we do ls of u, nothing there. If we do ls of m, um, now m is there. So we've mounted our lower directory into m and m is visible there. Uh, ls of w, uh, we've got a work directory and uh, nothing there. Okay, so we've done this. The, the next thing is we're, gonna do, we're gonna do touch of m slash start. Now, if you just saw M was empty, no, I'm sorry, M is not empty. M has these files. So we're gonna to touch these things and we're gonna basically access them. And we do that. Now, L is gonna be the same, M is gonna be the same. But if we look at U, we've effectively copied those files into the upper directory. And they are there, sitting there now. The error, the mistake that makes this a vulnerability is now when we access the, exit this uh, namespace, we can look and you know, we still got our directories here. We can look in L, there's our stuff. Uh, we can do a git cat on l slash python3 and it's got set uid now the os is smart enough to say that was done in a lower directory so if i do l slash python3 uh, and i do import os os dot set uid of zero for root it's gonna tell me you you don't have permissions to do that so even though that capability shows it's there it know the os knows that that was done within the uh, namespace and it can't handle that the mistake here is that if we do our ls of u, there's our files. If we do a git cap of u python3, it's still there. And if we run that and we import os, we do os dot uh, set uid of zero, says sure. If we do s dot system on id, we're root. We've run as root. So this is the mistake is that it does not, the boundary between the upper and the lower, lower directories was not handled correctly. And uh, we can see what happens. So if we come back here to our original POC, let's grab this here and paste it in again. So we're going to call unshare. I don't know why it's all lit up in white, but unshare, we remove ourselves from the namespace, run the, to run the command sh with a dash c. So we're just going to run the next string. That string makes the upper lower, makes these directories. It's going to copy Python in. It's going to set the capability on Python. It's going to mount the directories together in such a way and call touch M to effectively copy the permissions into the upper directory. We then leave that namespace and we're going to call Python 3 with the command import OS that UID uh, and then call OSS system. And we're going to remove those directories that were there. So clean up after ourselves and call the ID command. Um, this might have some errors if I run it right now because those directories already exist. I bet they do, uh, but they're they're good now. So we actually ran through just fine, and we probably and then we cleaned up after ourselves. So now if we run it again, we're there. Um, and so if we want to get a shell, we just have to change ID to bash, and we're root. So um, quick video today. I mean, this was nothing groundbreaking, but um, it's important when you're hacking to get a POC like this. Again, you don't have to understand everything it's doing, but to sort of walk through the various steps and get a feel. Um, overlay FS and namespaces are very complicated. And to understand all the working details of those, um, that, that could be a long way away. I don't truly have a great grasp on all of those things. But I have enough that I can sort of say, OK, I see what this is doing, and it makes sense to me. Um, I can definitely change ID to bash and know that I get a shell. Um, so that's, that's about the level at least you want to aim to be at, uh, at kind of a minimum. So I'm um, going to call it there. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll talk to you next time.